the parts that you need to know, and then hopefully Thursday we'll be able to see them uh, under the microscope. So first off, what type of protist is this? Um, it's an amoeba, it's an amoeboid, okay? And an amoeba is a, um, a protist that moves using what? How does it get around? Yeah, it's cytoplasm, sort of streams forward, uh, sort of blobs along. And the parts of the amoeba are fairly simple. Okay. Um, now, these circular uh, spaces within the cytoplasm, what do you think those are? Sebastian? Yeah, they're food vacuoles. Okay, they're where food was previously engulfed digested. Remember they consume their prey by surrounding it, engulfing it, and then breaking it down within those vacuoles. What about B? Laura? Yeah, that's the nucleus. C? Yeah? Cytoplasm. And that's the cytoplasm. And then what do we call the extensions, the sort of cytoplasm oozing forward? Uh, pseudopods. Okay, false C in these. So those are the parts of an amoeba that we need to know. Pretty simple. All right, well, let's look at a little bit more complex uh, protus, yeah? Often called um, slipper shaped, or it's shaped like a footprint. It's not a real flexible um, shape because it has a hard outer shell called the pellicle. It's not labeled here. But which one was this? Protus is this. Matthew? Paramecium? Yeah, paramecium. What group was it a part of? How does this get around? The yeah, the cilia. It gets around the cilia. Okay, and the cilia are these hairs, these very tiny little hairs that surround the uh, protus. They sort of paddle along through the water. They work in unison. And the paramecium cannot engulf its food like the amoeba can, so it has this opening. Okay, this opening that leads to the inside of the paramecium. Um, it's like the mouth, it's the oral group. Sort of an indentation in that shell, in that pellicle. And so it's also lined with cilia that sort of bring food particles in. At the bottom of this oral groove, there's a little tube sort of that leads into the paramecium. It's called the gullet. And at the end of that gullet, okay, it's another food vacuole. And that sort of has food particles go in and it's sort of filled up with food particles and eventually sort of separate from the gullet and moves through the cytoplasm. As it moves through the cytoplasm, um, enzymes are um, released into the vacuole to break down whatever was eaten, gets sort of broken down, and then the nutrients can be absorbed into the cytoplasm. You say it releases, so where does another one come from? It just forms at the end of that sort of little bubble. All right, and now that's how food gets into the paramecium and how it gets digested. Um, what do you think D is? Any ideas? Most cells would, you would think have just one of these, but this actually has two. Yeah, those are the nuclei, plural. Because uh, paramecium has two nuclei. The small one is called the micronucleus. You know what the big one would be called? You know what the opposite of micro is? Large. Picture? No. No. Macro. Macro. 
the opposite of micro is macro. So this is the micronucleus and the macronucleus. And um, protists can reproduce asexually, but some protists can also reproduce sexually, and that's the function of this, these two nuclei, is that um, a paramecium can go through a process of binary fission and basically copy itself and split into two, reproduce asexually and make a copy of itself. But also paramecia can go through a process called conjugation, which is a form of sexual reproduction. And what happens, um, it's somewhat complicated, but two paramecians sort of line up next to each other. This micronucleus kind of makes a copy of itself. And two paramecium exchange micronuclei, which then grows into a macronucleus. And they've exchanged some genetic material. So what's the benefit of that for the species? In terms of evolution? Any ideas? It adds variation to the species. It adds new combinations of traits and characteristics, which make it uh, more likely to survive in a changing environment, because there's a better chance that different paramecium may have certain characteristics that are helpful for survival. So it adds variation. Donovan? Do they have like feelings? Like this paramecium is attractive? No. They're a single cell, so they have no brains or nerves or anything like that. They're a single cell. Just like nucleus, it's just sort of what they do. It's the nucleus and their DNA directs them to do certain things. Uh, how about E? Matt? Cytoplasm. Yeah, that's the cytoplasm. And now because this paramecium has this sort of hard outer shell, the pellicle, waste products, large waste products, can't just sort of um, move out through the cell membrane. So they have a special opening where any waste that's left in this food vacuole, eventually that couldn't be digested, couldn't be used, makes its way over to this organelle, merges with it, and then releases those waste products to the outside. It's called the anal pore. I should know what G is. Looks like a little star. It's not a compass. It's not a GPS system. Time? No? Laura? No? Is it the little squeezing vacuole thing? Yeah, the little squeezy vacuole, yes. <laughs> the technical name, the contractile vacuole. And those little star shaped, star shaped, those arms sort of bring the water into that central portion, and then it squeezes and pumps the water out. So yeah, that's a contractile. What's that? Nope, fresh water. Here we see the fresh water. Okay, so those are the parts of paramecia. Then our last, our last group here. Okay, this is one of which group of um, protists? Jane? Yeah, the flagellates that move with a flagellum. The one we're looking at is called euglena. And euglena are interesting um, because they are both autotrophs and heterotrophs. They can sort of do either. So they move using this whip-like tail, it's a flagellum. And they also have a, an organelle called an eye spot. And the eye spot, they don't really, they can't see. But it's an organelle that's sensitive to light. And its purpose is to allow the euglena to sort of swim towards the light so that it can go through the process of photosynthesis. They need light for that. So it sort of helps it find light. Well, why would, why would it leave the light? It's just well, I mean, it could go towards sort of more intense light, depending on, on sort of where it's where it's living in the water. You know, if it's in the shade of a bunch of leaves and stuff, it can go towards an area where there's more direct sunlight. Uh, and all these organelles see, they actually should be green, this is in color. What organelle are those, Maya? Well, it's 
Those are the chloroplasts, yes. When we get the live protists, they come in little jars, uh, you'll know instantly which one the euglena is because the water is all green. That's because of those chloroplasts. So they will absorb sunlight to make, make um, food for this euglena. Sometimes it's not just you believe there's algae and stuff that are also eaten. Yeah. By animals. Not. I mean, they're very, very small, microscopic, so you know, they might inadvertently be eaten by animals. Other protists might eat them, and, and you know, some of them are eaten just as as um, organisms eat other things. Uh, D is the nucleus, and E is the contractile. Contractile. 